In this tutorial, I wanted to share a couple of wide angle compositional ideas with you. Uh, one of the ideas is something that we can do in the camera. All right. And I'll just share the idea. And I think it's something that you, you know, you might already know, or it's something that you can get out there and practice as well. Um, and then the other tip is going to be something that we can do inside of Photoshop to help things along. If maybe we weren't getting what we wanted out in the field, I'll show you a really uh, neat little trick that you can do with your, your wide angle lenses. Once you get the photos into Photoshop. Okay. So I want you to take a look at a couple of photos here. So let's, let's go to this document. I've got two photos where my, my tripod is virtually within the same place. So they're pretty close. Okay. Um, the lighting is a little bit different between the two. So this is one where I'm really close to the ground and I'm really close to this. This is what I consider a key area of the dry desert here, I'm really close to, to this one area here. And then in this photo, I'm a little bit higher up. All right. Focal length, pretty darn close between the two. Uh, so this photo I believe is uh, 17, 18 millimeters. And uh, this one I believe was like 20, 22 millimeters. So pretty close inside of focal length. But the main difference is the impact of the size, other than there, there's some lighting differences between the two as well. But the main difference is the impact of the size of what happens when we get close to something with a wide angle lens. Look at how much of an impact this area makes. And what I did is I copy and I pasted it onto its own layer here so that I can show you something. I wanna show you the two next to each other because this is the same piece of earth. And all it is, aside from a few millimeters different in focal length, all it is is getting down lower and closer to something. And when you do that with a wide angle lens, you're able to, to magnify, you're able to make it look so much bigger if you look at the difference between these two areas here, okay? So that's concept number one. We can do that out in the field. Uh, I would encourage you to do out in the field compositionally. If, if what's in your foreground is the most impactful thing in your photo, you should show it off. You should really show it off, all right? There's nothing of great impact in the background of this photo. The reason why you go to a location like this is because of all of these little patterns and uh, dry desert floor that we get when we go there. So you need to show that off and that's one way you can do it. However, Let's go over to something that we can do here on the computer because um, one thing that can happen when we get down lower and we even go wider, when we go wide angle with something, so maybe I have a 16 to 35 and if I shoot it at 16, which I did here, I got down nice and low and nice and close to this. And then when I had this photo, I'm in basically the same place. Again, the lighting's a little bit different between the two, but this one I believe is at 24 millimeters. Um, so a little bit more zoomed in and a little bit higher. But one of the things that happens is when you go wider, you take whatever's off in the distance and you make it really small. So yeah, we do. We make, we make the, the, the ground and the foreground that we got down low and we got down close. We made this really big here. Okay. But we also made this mountain range in the distance really small. Okay. So by zooming in a little bit, and again, I'm a little bit higher in this case as well, by zooming in a little bit, I'm able to make the impact of what's off in the distance bigger. Also really quick here. So uh, I've got a brand new course coming out. It's called inside the composition. It, it is everything that I know in, in 20 years about composition. Uh, if you like that little tip I gave you about getting down low and the impact of getting down low and the comparison that you saw in the beginning, that, that literally just scratches the surface of all of the stuff that I have inside of this course. So you can uh, do a couple things. You can register your interest over on the website um, and that will do two things that'll number one, get you to be the first to know where you get the biggest discount. Cause I always, I always give the biggest discount in that first week when I release the course. Plus when the course comes out, you'll get a, uh, a cool free little gift with it as well. Okay. So just swing by the website and uh, you can put your email in to uh, let me know that you're interested and I will let you know when it comes out back over to our tutorial so now we've got this this trade-off right we want to shoot wide and we want to make a real big impact of what's in front of us and what's close to the ground but we also don't want to minimize these amazing mountains that are off in the distance well one of the things you can do is is twofold you may already have photos that you can practice this with, or just put this into your, your little arsenal of tricks that you can do and use in the future to go out and shoot this way. 
I've got my wider photo here, okay? And then I've got my more zoomed in photo here. So what I would do is just take a selection of the wider version of the photo. I'm just gonna make a quick rectangular selection of that foreground. And I'll copy and paste it, and I'll pop it over onto this photo here, and then I'll just move it down a little bit. And then I'm just gonna add a layer mask to this layer by just clicking the Add Layer Mask button in the Layers panel, and then I'll use a brush with black as the foreground color to just go in here and just paint away some of this area. All right, I got a little bit too far there, there we go. So I'll just paint away some of the air. I'm actually holding down the shift key, which gives me a nice straight line in there as well. So I'm able to merge the two of these together. Now, they might not always fit perfectly, especially because the lighting was different between the two of these. So I can click on my layer thumbnail and I can add adjustment layers if you want to keep it non-destructive. For me personally, I, I'm just, I know I don't want to undo this. So I'll just come up here to image adjustments and I'll go to brightness and contrast. And I'll just make this one a little bit brighter so it fits in a little bit better with what was underneath there originally. Okay, the, the, the brightness, the overall toning and color of it match a little bit better now. But what I'm able to do here is I'm able to take the foreground that I got from, you know, just going really wide with the photo, right? 16 millimeters, I'm able to take that foreground, which is much more impactful in the photo. I'm able to merge that with the background, which is much more impactful in this photo. It's, it's essentially the same composition, right? It's the same mountain range. All I did was go a little bit wider, get a little bit lower too, but that that made the background just look so small. So now I'm able to combine the best of both of these worlds and really get a, a nice impact from the photo, get down low, get that foreground that we really like, you know, especially wide angle. And you know, essentially you're mixing focal lengths a little bit, um, but I think overall it creates, if you will, something that's more true to life, something that actually looked more like it did when I was there. And I know where I'm posting this video and I, I know the purists and the keyboard warriors are gonna come out in droves to say this isn't real photography but to me th this is actually way more real than what my camera sees when I put a 16 millimeter lens in front of it because that certainly isn't the way that life actually looks out there so hopefully between the first tip of something that you can do in the camera to make a little bit more impact with your wide angle photography and then what you can do on the computer here hopefully this just gives you a few ideas of what you can do with your own photos